Like how the pilot episode of The Amazing Digital Circus is doing incredibly well for Glitch Productions' YouTube channel, my first episode of turning the characters from that into SCPs is doing incredibly well for Popcross Studios. And I greatly appreciate subscribers new and old for giving me a lot of great suggestions for characters that I could use in today's sequel episode. And while I do still think there's some more creative things I could do with these characters, like turn them into dragons or into Marvel and DC superheroes, if this is working for people, then I am very happy to keep milking this gravy train until it stops giving honey. Which is definitely how that saying goes, don't look it up. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe! if you feel like, but either way, enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome back to our second lecture on the digital entities found within the realm classified as SCP-D700, also known as the Digital Circus. The information we've learned is still actively being updated by observing this realm through the eyes of SCP operative Elizabeth Freeman, whom, upon becoming trapped in the circus, forgot everything about herself in the real world and is currently being referred to within as Pomni. Of course, prior to commencing, I would like to make some corrections to our previous lecture on these subclassified SCP-D entities. Firstly, I referred to D701, aka Pomni, as resembling a clown in a jester's hat when, more accurately, her entire form appears more like that of a jester. Secondly, I previously stated that Entity D704, aka Jax, is unable to separate its teeth, but this has been proven false as during an incident where another entity choked D704, it did indeed open its mouth fully, teeth and all. Now, on to today's first new entity document. Item number SCP-D705. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. D705 is contained within the digital circus, D700, and our intent is to free her along with Agent Freeman, as well as the other beings trapped within. Amnestics will likely be given to non-SCP operatives once freed to ensure they do not recall what happened when trapped in this realm. Description. D705 resembles a child's ragdoll, but is fully sentient, more proportional to a human, and stands at a slightly taller height than Agent Freeman's form in the circus. Additional note, heights are difficult to determine due to the nature of this reality. Dr. Jack Bright has suggested we measure the entities in... how many gloinks tall they are, but thankfully this inane suggestion has been ignored. D705 has a button in place of one eye, while the other appears more akin to that of a normal human being's eye. She has taken on the name of Ragatha, and appears to be the most upbeat of the beings trapped in this realm. Though unconfirmed, as many of our facts about this realm are, from conversations overheard by our observing operatives, it is believed that D705 has been trapped in this realm for the second longest amount of time after D707 whom we will discuss later. In spite of this, she appears to have the most positive demeanor, other than of course the ringmaster D702, who is still believed to be an artificially intelligent entity not trapped in this realm like Ragatha and the others. Upon our Agent Freeman entering this realm and forgetting who she was, D705 was the most welcoming and comforting towards her, showing Agent Freeman to her own room of the circus. Unfortunately, she was also briefly injured by Entity D-708, discussed in our prior lecture, but Kane, D-702, was able to heal her injuries instantaneously upon learning she had been harmed. Now, we have begun to make some headway in tracking the locations of the other entities trapped in this realm, including Ragatha. With Foundation personnel working nearly around the clock to decrypt signals going in and out of this realm, we believe an IP address has been found for the being from our world who is stuck in the digital circus in the form of Ragatha. The owner of the home we have tracked the signal to is one Amanda Hufford in Houston, Texas. Operatives have been sent to her home, but strangely it seems to be abandoned. It is possible our decryptors have found inaccurate information, but upon locating past footage of this woman online, her voice and the cadence of her speech patterns does sound identical to that of the entity known as Ragatha. This document shall be updated when we acquire more information or confirmation of this theory. Mm -hmm. 
Well, admittedly I do not fully understand why, many who listened to our previous lecture were adamant that I discuss this next entity. Our document on her was rather light, as she had not been observed to do much as of yet, but upon many, many, many requests, we have investigated further into this entity so that she could be elaborated on in more detail. Item number SCP-D706. Object class, safe. Special Containment Procedures, identical to D-705. Description. D-706, referred to within the circus as Gangle, appears initially as a humanoid being, but whose form is completely hollow and constructed by red ribbons. In place of a normal face, she wears one of two masks, similar to the comedy and tragedy masks often used to represent stage theater, originating back to ancient Greece. When first found in the circus, she was observed wearing the more jovial comedy mask, but when she was bumped into by Entity D-707, the mask fell off, revealing behind it the second mask with the opposite expression. The fallen comedy mask was also soon broken, meaning that for some time D-706 was stuck with only her tragedy mask. It also appears that whichever mask this entity is wearing has some form of control over her demeanor, she can choose to switch between the two, but if one is forcibly or accidentally removed, then D-706's mood will immediately change to be more in line with the mask being worn. Because of this, when her comedy mask was broken, until it was fixed, she was unable to feel any positive emotions. This has led some in the Foundation to wonder if a new mask could be constructed for this entity with another expression that could then control this entity's demeanor further. For instance, if a mask was constructed with a furious expression, could that then be placed on the entity to make it angry and lash out at others? Or is there something special about the two masks that D-706 possesses that makes them uniquely linked to its being? It also leads to the question of what this entity's true form is like outside of this realm. Perhaps this being has bipolar disorder in the real world, causing her to have unusually rapid shifts in mood, energy levels, and concentration. This could then have manifested into the form she took on in this realm. Agent Elizabeth Freeman is known by her closer colleagues to be a particularly funny person, so it is possible that that is what caused her form in this realm to be that of a jester. These speculations are still being researched to try and find some tangible proof, but for the time being they are good avenues to explore for those of you researching these entities. Quick interruption here to show you the most beautiful thing I have ever made in my life. Monsters of the Multiverse, my very first art book, which is officially released as of today. And I was able to update it last minute, so it has three drawings from the episode you're watching right now. For $35 American plus taxes and shipping, you get a 132 page full color book with 226 of my absolute best monster and creature drawings. It's got dragons and fantasy beasts, SCPs, demons, kaiju, dinosaurs, and so much more. I just got this proof copy and I am seriously freaking out about how good it looks. If you want to get a copy of this in yourself, it will be linked in the cards and in the description and the pinned comment. And honestly, I don't even know what else to say. I am just so excited that this is finally a thing. Check it out if you're interested, but for now, back into more SCPs. Another entity we currently know little about, but will open discussion and research into now, is... I'm sorry, it seems we have a question from... oh no. Yeah, Jack Bright here, Prof. Why are you always saying things like discuss when you're doing these lectures? I mean, they're, they're kind of always just you talking at us, right? It's not really a discussion. I suppose that is a valid criticism, but if you wish to address it further, then you and I can discuss it in private after this lecture. Please refrain from interrupting again. Anyhow, let us move on to item number SCP-D707. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures, identical to prior entries. Description. D-707, referred to within this realm as Kinger, resembles a sentient king chess piece. He has floating hands and wears a long red cape with a fur lining, reminiscent of the mantle or royal garment worn during coronations. 
He has two large skewed eyes, but no other facial features. In spite of having no visible mouth, he is still able to speak. He often appears to be concerned or afraid, and others in the digital circus have referred to him as being, in their terms, crazy. While he does exhibit unusual and somewhat manic behavior, often flailing his hands about as he speaks and his eyes looking off in different directions at random, we do believe he is still largely of sound mind. He can convey his thoughts into clear statements and has willingly helped his fellow prisoners during difficult situations, showing a fair degree of understanding of the events transpiring around him. Further evidence of his sanity is that in cases of abstraction, an ailment in this realm discussed in regards to D708, when one truly does lose their mind in D700, they will be altered into a glitching black monstrous form. So, seeing as how this has not happened to D707, there is likely more going on within his mind than his counterparts in the digital circus are willing to acknowledge. Our speculations about the forms of these entities being linked to elements of their true selves has led some in the Foundation to consider that he was once either royalty, or otherwise quite wealthy, or that he was a master chess player. Seven years ago, the winner of three consecutive US chess championships, a man named Sean Chiplock, mysteriously disappeared. The Foundation did not look into this at the time, as nothing anomalous was believed to have happened to him. It is a very loose possible link, but we have a researcher waiting to find out how long D707 has been trapped in this realm. If the entity has been trapped in the digital circus for as long as Chiplock has been missing, then that would likely prove them to be one in the same. I personally see it as unlikely for this to pan out, but all avenues are worth exploring. Our final entity for today is not believed to be one of the entities who is a human being trapped in this realm, but more likely another artificially intelligent program, though this could be proven false in the future. Item number SCP-D710, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. D710 currently resides within a nest she has built for herself in the basement of the Digital Circus, not to be confused with the cellar where the abstracted D708 is currently held. She has thus far shown no ability or desire to leave this area. Description D710 refers to herself as the Queen of the Gloinks. She is roughly 50 times the volume of Agent Freeman's form in this realm, and somewhat resembles a slug or particularly rotund snake. Her flesh is largely red, with yellow spots along with a purple elevated lining running along her side. She appears to have two heads, but one is mainly used for speech and consumption, while the other seems more often to be used to expel waste. She has 12 eyes of various sizes protruding from her main head, and 8 on the other. This entity seems to be the leader of a group of beings referred to as the Gloinks. They are small, colorful shapes, each with two eyes and a mouth, that move by rolling and hopping along their environment. They also have a proclivity to steal any item they interact with by pressing themselves against it and thereafter having the item stuck to them. Their movement and traversal speed seem to be completely unhindered by the weight of whatever they have stuck themselves to. They also tend to bring these items down to the basement to their queen for either consumption or to continue building her nest. D710 has also proven to be hostile towards entities that are not one of her gloinks. She has stated clearly that she believes everyone and everything should be gloinks. Some suspect that it is possible she can convert other items and beings into gloinks by consuming them and holding them within her body for a long enough period of time, but that is purely speculation at this point. She has been seen to consume part of the body of one of the trapped beings in this realm, but that being was then expelled from D710 and had not been physically altered in any way, suggesting that this theory is false and that, while she is not friendly towards the other entities, she cannot truly do them harm in the same way that an abstracted being can. 
Now, we have not covered every being found in this realm, and another lecture is certainly likely, though we may have to wait some time so that we can acquire more information and have enough to disc have enough to elaborate on next time. Thank you for your time and good night. If you enjoyed this, I'd of course recommend going back to the first episode. If you haven't seen it, I'll have it linked in the description. Or if you're new here, you might want to check out some of the other cool stuff that I make on this channel. Since Invincible Season 2 starts today, you might want to watch my Famous Dragons as Superheroes episode. Or if you like stuff like Little Nightmares and horror video games, you might like my horror video game characters as Marvel Super Heroes episode. Also, even though I haven't done Zubul yet, we don't really have enough characters for a third episode of this yet. Maybe when the second episode of the show comes out. But I do have an idea for putting Pomni on the Suicide Squad that I really like, so maybe I'll do a Super Heroes episode of this next. But I'm also open to suggestions. Let me know what you want me to do with Digital Circus characters in the comments. And besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people People with today is a quote I read this week from a woman named Dr. Caroline Leaf, who said that rejection is a sign that you showed up. Be proud of yourself for stepping forward despite the outcome. Remember that every time you take yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone and push towards something you're trying to achieve or get, even if you don't get it that time, you've given yourself a chance that people who aren't trying don't have. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.